Hey, remember when Pokemon was good? No. <laughs> I'm sure you've seen plenty of people talking about that. Well, you think so, but with how people are willing to talk about Pokemon over the last few years, you'd think it was the worst thing in the world and shot their mothers. And don't get me wrong, Pokemon could easily be better. With Pokemon Legends Z to A coming out early next year, and with people waiting with bated breath to talk about the game and what new designs it'll hold, I think now would be a good time to announce my own monster catching project, Project Cryptids. Now, you may be wondering, what is Project Cryptids? Well, for those who don't follow me on Twitter, yes, I refuse to call it X, over the past year or so, I've been posting artwork of monster designs for this project, as well as character concepts. For a few years, I've been working on assets, writing up story concepts, and of course, designing creatures for a game that is like Pokemon, but with my own spin on it. And then my computer exploded, and almost all that hard work was destroyed. Well, I say destroyed, but most of it is now trapped on an internal hard drive that I can't access, and according to experts, it cost about $5,000 to send to pros to get out. And even then, there would be a big chance I wouldn't get anything out of it. So that would be $5,000 wasted. So, much like anyone who has lost a project that they've been secretly working on for years and seeing that work go up in smoke, I got depressed. And then I picked myself up and started working on it again. And this video series, which I hope can become a series, I want to go through the design process for the monsters, the characters, and even the world at large. I don't normally like to ask this at the beginning of a video, but if this sounds interesting to you, please consider leaving a like on it and making sure you're subscribed. I want to make sure this is an actual game at some point, and having people show a ton of interest in the project will help push me to make more of this series and then the game as well. So what exactly is Cryptids? Cryptids is a monster catching game that I am in designing right now, in the same vein as Pokemon, but will also have mechanics and story elements that I believe should have been in Pokemon for ages ago. Pokemon tends to have a bit of an issue appealing to its longtime fans, and I hope to capitalize on it by actually appealing to what they want. Good story, better gameplay, and of course listening to what some people have been talking about. I will go further than mechanics in future videos, but for now I figured we should start with something fun, and that would be one of the starters in the game. I'm on a common, let's begin. One of the most iconic parts about Pokemon, and one that really sparks up conversations about upcoming games, is what the starters are going to be, and I figured to start this series we'd have a development of the first starter, as well as the first scripted I ever designed, Countish. Now if you're watching the screen you'll be seeing draw footage, where I'm making the little monster and showing off the previous designs. One of the things I've always made me smile about the first Pokemon was that each of the starters was a cold-blooded creature, either a reptile in the case of Squirtle and Charmander, or an amphibian with Bulbasaur. So for cryptids, I wanted to use mammals. Sort of a bit of a, you know, reversal. One animal I've always liked was a bat, and considering that one of the themes I'm going for with the term cryptids, which if you're not familiar with cryptids, those are undiscovered animals, but are creatures whose existence is disputed and not supported by scientific nature. Like if you want an example, creatures like Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster, those are probably the most iconic of what a cryptid is. But it isn't just cryptids that I'm looking for inspiration for cryptids. I'm also looking into making things such as horror movie monsters into cryptids as well, and hence why we have a bat for Countash. I'm sure a lot of people can already guess what I'm going for, but let's wait till after I get to the final stage of the evolution line for the bat here. I actually want to talk a bit about the design of Countash, who had an initially more anthropomorphic design, with a sleeker body and having the fluff on its body act as pseudo-clothing. One of the major criticisms or suggestions was that Countash's original design was a bit too second stage based. Now I personally didn't agree with that, especially since we have a Pokemon like Scorbunny that had similar traits that of Countash's design especially in the physique department, but I did want to make Countesh a bit more of a fluffball. The reason for this is when you're making a monster catcher and you really want to make an impression on monster designs, the starters are key. Many people, especially over the years, fell in love with the starters. There were things like Team Scorbunny, Team Fuecoco, and etc. And I kind of want to do the same thing with Countesh and the rest of the starters when I get to them. And to do that, I wanted to have my fire starter, Countesh, have a much more rounder shape but still maintain the same elements that were in the initial design, such as the tall ears, the orange fluff, and of course, the large wings. So I give you Countash, the Spark Bat Cryptid, a relatively newly discovered cryptid located in the country of Gecko, discovered in the dead volcanoes turned mountain. There have been many reports of colonies of Countash from mountain hikers who saw the sparks created from their flapping wings acting as a light source for lost hikers at night. I'm sure there's one question on your guys' mind. Why the fire starter first? Pokemon usually starts with the grass starter, and don't get it twisted, I too have a grass mon for this. But one thing I want to do is take some elements from Pokemon and warp them. It's a small start, but starting with the fire type instead of the grass type is one of them. In addition, not only am I considering what cryptids look like, but I'm also considering what their stats are, with Countash being a bit of a speedy magic attacker. Normally, the three stars of Pokemon have their signature Torrent, Overgrow, or Ablaze abilities, which, while iconic, I've never really been a fan of, especially since every starter has their specific type version of it. 
It's kind of lost its kick to me, so I decided to go with an ability that was more fitting a unique line. Which mechanically works like Dancer, like Pokemon, but I thought having a starter monster with that ability would be much more fitting and fun. Of course, this is all subject to change, but if you have suggestions, I welcome them in the comments below. I would like to get as much feedback on this project as possible and make a great game for people to enjoy. But for now, let's get to the second stage. So for our next script, it's going to be the next stage of maturity for Countash. Firebat. When it comes to the second stages of Pokemon, especially for the starters, there are trends of them having growing pains and how they tend to be rather goofy or lanky. And while there is some charm to the designs of Raboot or Quilladin, you also have designs that are mostly just matured versions of the previous state. And that's something I wanted to play into as well, actually combining the original Countash design and making Firebat have a more human-like look, as well as making them a little sleeker. One thing I'm sure I'll get comments about is how I'm making Furbait, and listen, I know. I make a living on the internet. I've been on Twitter, Tumblr, DeviantArt, Instagram, what other sites you can think of that host images. I am well aware of what the internet will do to creatures that they like. Whether it be Pokemon, Digimon, or whatever, at this point, I've embraced it. And while I won't be doing anything as explicit as, say, Lavender from Pal World, I still know that some of the designs I make for this game will elicit those kinds of reactions. It's just the nature of the beast. Back to the design itself, you probably notice that while the design gets a bit more detail, such as the white face and the eyebrows changing, Firebat has a relatively simple design, especially for a second stage. While it's not as complicated as some middle stages can get for Pokemon, I wanted to go for a more simplistic design for some of my starters. Don't get me wrong, I for one love complex designs, but at the same time, the less details you have to remember about a character, the easier it is to remind about them. And when you look at monsters that are related to each other, I think it strengthens the line more. Even more so when you keep up that trend in the final evolutions of starter mons. I think there needs to be a steady growth of evolution between the same lines. It also works with the silhouette. If you want to have similar traits, like the wings and ears being similar to the previous stage, again, it acts as an in-between for the first and final evolutions. So, I give you Firebat, the Spark Bat Cryptid. Firebats are mostly curious creatures. When they gain the ability to walk on their stronger legs, they manage to explore nearby forests and towns, curious about how vast the world is. It's theorized that there is a never-ending flame within Firebats' bodies that can be used with a fire breath and make their bodies lighter for flight. So with Firebat and Countish, I'm sure most of you are aware of what horror monster I'm going for, one of the most iconic of horror movie monsters, the Vampire. I've always loved the idea of a bat-based monster that can do so much more for the iconic of the classic silver screen. Of course, I could have been inspired since when I first came up with Countash many years ago, I was in the major binge of Castlevania. That might have had an effect on me. Anyway, final evolution time. So here we come to the final stage of the Countash line. Vampire. For this one, I want to have a much more out there design while having some elements with the previous two stages. Of course, we have the wings, the ears, and the white that was on Firebat's body, but we expand upon them. I really wanted to take this to the human elements for this design. I know there's a lot of people who aren't huge fans of the idea of anthropomorphic designs, especially when it comes to starter Pokemon. Hell, I made a few videos talking about it years ago at this point. However, when you really consider things like vampires, I think it's fair game to have a more of a human-based figure. I'd also like to say that one of the other influences when it comes to vampire is, well, the devil. After all, in Romanian language, Dracula is the word for devil, and Dracula is known as the son of the devil. More often than not, when we see depictions of the devil, there are things such as him having animalistic characteristics, as well as having an affinity of fire. Those elements are what I wanted to be reflected in the final evolution of Countash, as well as playing more to the vivacious figure for the character. One thing I'm sure people who are watching the speed draws that are going on is that one of the most jarring things about this design is that it's more female oriented. Pokemon stars aren't averse to having female elements in their designs, Delphox and Primarina being the poster girls for that argument. However, a vast majority of the time, the star Pokemon tend to be a lot more male oriented, especially the fire types, Charizard, Typhlosion, Blaziken, Infernape, Embor, Incineroar, Cinderace, and arguably Skeledurge as well. The only one who goes against that notion is the aforementioned Delphox. So I wanted the first starter to go against the major masculine designs that Pokemon often goes for. Hell, I even decided once we get coding done, the Countash line would have the opposite gender ratio, with a 12.5% being male and 87.5% being female. That doesn't say you can't get yourself a male Countess or Firebat or even a vampire, but one thing that really irked me was the fact that more feminine designs of Pokemon, especially for the starters, would often be male. I understand that mechanically that's a stop from breeding your starter endlessly, but there are other methods to prevent that and I was never really a fan of that choice there. One thing you notice that with our current design is that there's now an inclusion of a ring around her neck. Now another oddity in the world of Pokemon is the inclusion of articles of clothing or such when it comes to monster designs. 
There are some people out there who do believe that it's weird for some Pokemon to have designs that make them wear clothing or have the appearance of clothing. I do not agree with that at all. Sometimes when it comes to designs, you want to break up some parts in order to draw people's attention to some aspect of the character. In this case, adding a striking yellow band around our lady bat's neck helps a contrasting color that leads up to her face. You'll also notice that our baddie lady here also has a long tail, which would allow it to go back into the devil reference that I brought up a touch ago, as well as giving it a tuft of red fur to simulate fire. I'm sure there's some people who will say that there isn't enough of a fire element used in the design for a fire-type creature. I disagree with that too, especially when we look at some of the final evolutions of Pokémon, such as Cinderace and Blaziken in their official art, they do not have fire in their designs. Still, that's in the minority, but I believe that your fire types don't need to have flames all over them, and I like to think that our vampire design has fur resembling flames in that regard. There's also the posing. Posing, especially when it comes to character design, can be just as important to establish a character's personality. For our bat here, I want to go with a more playful, if not flamboyant, pose to showcase her nature. So, I give you guys Vampire. Vampire, the hot-blooded cryptid. There are legends of Vampire dating back several decades, where they would descend upon unsuspecting people to bite their necks and drink their blood. Vampires are known to be lauded by their colonies, especially when they're capable of producing flames that can melt rock and steel within moments. So now that we've managed to finish the countdown line, I hope you guys enjoy the designs for the fire starters. If you guys will leave a like and comment, let me know what you think of the concept. I would love to keep doing this series, but regardless, I'll be continuing with creating the game. But it'll be more in the background. But I would appreciate more support with it either way. If you want to see more, let's try to get this video up to a thousand likes. We do that, I'll get to the next starter, which will be based off the werewolf. And if you want to support the game, please consider supporting me on Patreon, Ko-Fi, or being a channel member. If you do, you get access to some WIPs and other assets that I've made for this game and other things. In any case, thank you very much for watching. I'm Uncommon, and have a lovely evening.